Hello and welcome to the Timberwolves Daily YouTube channel. We're back with Jake Painting. It's been a minute, but we're back here today to talk about a variety of Timberwolves topics. I mean, the news is just crazy. It keeps coming in and in. So much stuff to talk about. No, but for real, we're going to be talking about the Jaden contract a bit. Going to be touching on that. And then just go over our reasons to be optimistic about this Timberwolves team this upcoming season. So, Jake, how you doing? He asked me the question, uh, what are we going to be talking about about 30 minutes ago? And it kind of imploded my world as I thought, oh no, that's a tough one, but glad to be here. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. Yeah, we tend to we tend to plan podcasts without um, <laughs> planning podcasts. So, um, but like I said to you, we always we always find something to talk about, even when there's not much Timberwolves news trickling down the pipe. Um, we find something to talk about, and I mean, it's an intriguing team, even when there's there's nothing to talk about. So, I'm excited to be here. Excited to be talking with you again. Absolutely. Well, we'll just get right into the Jaden contract, I suppose, to start since we last talked. There's been very little news. Everything I've heard has been that the two sides are just far apart, but that there is at least a price range that they're they're looking at. For the McDaniels group, it's above 24, 25 million per year, or you know, maybe maybe 27 or so, but we know it's probably under 30, but above 25. And we talked last time about our maximum, and we both had it around 30. Have you changed on that at all, or do you have any thoughts on this drawing out with the Jaden stuff? Yeah, I mean, it's always worrying, I guess, when you when there isn't a contract sign. I don't think anyone is in full blown panic mode. Uh, I'm certainly not. It's it's a weird situation. It, it makes sense for his side of of proceedings to want to play this out, take it all the way to maybe restricted free agency. It also makes sense. For the Timberwolves to get things done straight away and to lock him up long term, so there's also risk that you know, touch wood, McDaniel's gets injured, you know, doesn't get injured. But if he does, and that can lower the price range. If he has a bad season, that can lower the price range. If these temperament issues that kind of bobbed up with the punching of the wall somehow take an unexpected turn for the worst next season, that probably lowers the price range as well. But on the other hand. Maybe that's just fuel to the fire for Jaden in terms of playing better next season, doing more offensively, you know, training really hard in the offseason to get better. It's it's a, a weird situation. I don't think, like I said, I don't think don't think it's one to be panicking about, but I think I'm about the same. 30 million, like five years, 150 million seems like a pretty good price for someone who has shown a lot, obviously, shown a lot of potential, obviously, but hasn't really broke through in terms of being a a guy that you can base an offense around. You can base a defense around him. We know that, but a guy who's going to give you 15 plus points a night, you know, are usually the guys that get $150 million for their contract. So yeah, I think, I think 30 million, like we said, if, if they gave him 200 million, it would be like, whoa, that's a lot of money. But I don't think anyone would be like, well, we'd rather him leave right. and not pay that money. So I just want him to be signed for whatever it is, because I love Jaden McDaniels and I want to see him, play for my basketball team for another five years yeah in terms of like i guess panic for me there it's a one out of ten i yeah there's for him there's no reason really to do it like right now this instant why not negotiate for a while like it's different from edwards quite a bit because edwards just has the figure locked in being a mm -hmm. max contract player with Jaden, like right now with his play he's probably like a 20 million player but the potential the wolves his potential is like, you know, 35, 40 million. And right, yeah. You maybe want to settle in the middle there at 30 if you're the Wolves, probably a little less, but it's an interesting scenario because, yeah, I mean, he, again, we don't know if he's ever going to hit that potential, but if he does and you're paying him 30 million, awesome. So I'm not at all panicked about it in any way, shape, or form. Mm. I think it gets, I don't even know if it gets done this off season, but again, like you said, there's injury risk at some point. Maybe he just says, Hey, 27 million per year is 27 mil per year. Like, cool, take that, run with it, continue to get better. And then, you know, maybe you're max type player on your other contract. So it's interesting. Um, Yeah, not at all worried. Just figured we should address yeah. it because it's kind of the biggest elephant in the Wolves room right now. If you're not counting the Carl stuff, which at this point, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think that it, it could end up being something similar to the Nas Reid situation where where we all kind of expected it to just linger into free agency and and it would be the smart move for Nas himself, I think, would have been to 
take it to free agency, see what kind of deals he could get, see what kind of playing time or different role he could get. But then the deadline inches closer and all of a sudden one team, you know, one side of the deal budges a little bit and Nas Reed signs before free agency even begins. So I think as we get closer to the extension deadline, maybe Minnesota decide that they really do want to lock this up before free agency and, and don't want to let it linger on for a full season. And they just give him an extra two or three or four or five million a year. And that's what it takes to get the deal over the line. Or it just goes to restrict. I mean, at the end of the day, the worst case scenario that can happen here is that it goes all the way to restrictive free agency. He gets way more than Minnesota originally planned to give him. And the Wolves match that offer sheet. And he's back with the Timberwolves anyway. So I don't think there's any risk of McDaniels leaving. I don't think he's the kind of guy to... Um, kind of let this affect his performance or to right. let this affect his relationship with the team if it does linger into free agency. So I think that, like you said, it's a one out of 10 on the panic meter scale, but I would like to see it get signed because I want guys to be locked up long-term as fast as possible. But that is, a you know, it's not how it always works in the business. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm with you. I'd love to see it get done. The, I mean, the most surprising scenario of it is him ending up somewhere else. Like that's, the most would, it would be shocking thing. if that yeah. happened because yeah. minnesota so. would have to actively choose to let him go and it just you know they're smart guys smart smarter than us who are watching and, and i think even us mere mortals who are who are watching <laughs> can see that, that that's just not an option to let him go yeah so that's my thoughts on the biggest the, it's kind of the only news circulating and yeah. is there any other news i miss like i, I don't think so no, they're just they're only I mean, the small bits, I guess. That Cat is playing for the Dominican right, Republic, right. which is which is cool. I mean, yeah. I, I'm not a huge, um, you know, it's the same thing. Selfishly, I want to see everyone not play for international because I want them all to be guaranteed or, or more guaranteed to be healthy at the start of the season. But on the other hand, I think it's really cool that Cat's playing for the Dominican Republic. It's really cool that Kyle Anderson's playing for China. It's really cool that Gobert's going back to play for France, even though you know it was a bit rocky at the start of last season. Like this is really important for all of those guys and with USA obviously as well. Um, it's really important for all these guys to play for their country. And it'll be cool to have such a diverse spectrum of players in the world cup and give us sickos something to watch um, <laughs> <laughs> where in the, in the doldrums of the NBA off season. Yeah. I don't have any issues with it until there are issues with it. You know, like yeah, right now I'm yeah. like, cool. But if Ant, you know, twists his ankle, it's like, well, I knew he shouldn't have been doing it. So <laughs> yeah. once, once that happens, I'll be all riled up and being like, I knew it all along. But yeah, same with Gobert when he comes into, you know, media day and goes, my legs are tired again. I'm going to be like, all right, dude. Yeah. Like, the thing <laughs> I keep saying about Gobert is that he has always played for France. Like, yeah. it's not like he only decided to yeah, last but now he's season. like 33. You know yeah but he's he's played for france at 29 you know the year before he got traded to the timberwolves and he won defensive player of the year you know like it's he's he's a guy who i think has managed these workloads forever i don't think that it's weird with gobert because you have the evidence there that he was injured or at least sore coming into last season and that he made a difference it, right yeah like that, we can't like, right we can't deny that but also like this is a guy who is pretty insanely like fit and you know as a really is a workhorse when it comes to his body and always has been so i don't think he's the kind of guy who you can i i more worry about him getting out of shape i do think it's it's good for him to be in shape i just think that you hope that nothing unfortunate happens and that goes across the board kyle anderson was had back spasms all season and you know he is a worry going into an international competition when you probably think it would be good for him to have some time off cat had the calf injury again it would probably be good for him to have some more recovery time and i mean and it's probably different because Ant has a history of coming into camp unfit yeah uh, so may so maybe having to stay in shape because he's playing such high level basketball is, is probably a good thing but yeah i'm not too stressed about that i i do prefer everyone to you know be at home and yeah, resting selfish. their body and and yeah but again it's it'll be fun to watch and I'm, I'm looking forward to watching some some international hoops yep i'm with you again selfishly i'm not going to complain about it until it happens but yeah it's cool yeah. right now